What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you a video about the Necromancer and what I'm going to be playing at the start of Season 2. And we're going to kind of break down the entire build. I'm going to kind of go over a bunch of things. And if everything kind of goes the way I hope it does or how I think everything is going to work, then the build is going to be insanely powerful. It's going to be strong anyway, but, you know, there's just going to be a few changes that are probably just going to be you know here or there after we get into testing but so why necromancer i'm going to be playing necromancer because i think necromancer is going to have the biggest changes and the biggest kind of impact in the new season there's a lot of changes to all of the classes but i think the huge change to necromancer minions as well as all of the overpower changes is really going to open up a lot of different builds for the necromancer besides just playing bone spear so we have my necromancer here i'm gonna be starting necromancer in season two but let's go over what i'm going to be playing um at the start of season two and that is going to be blood surge necromancer okay this entire guy is going to be over on mobilitics shout out to mobilitics everything is going to be written out here you guys can go check out the link is going to be down in the description below okay um so why blood surge okay overpower is being pushed extremely extremely strong in season two as well as changing a lot of things that go from base life to max life so now we're going to be able to um not only fortify our hp much higher and much faster our overpower damage has all been juiced up across the board so overpower is going to be an incredibly powerful skill in season two so blood surge was already just okay but now with the overpower changes it's going to be incredibly powerful in season two okay so let's go ahead and break down the tree and why i've gone with the skills that i've gone with so we got hemorrhage this is a pretty basic skill to go with any kind of uh, blood or build or blood build for the necromancer it has a chance to drop informed blood orbs which is really really strong we're going to go into enhance and then we're going to go into the acolytes because of the increased attack speed the faster that we can attack to build our essence back up um, not only does that allow us to just spam blood surge but it gives us a chance to you know increase that attack speed to be able to form more blood orbs so hemorrhage is pretty much a go-to there then we're coming down and of course we're taking blood surge into uh paranormal blood surge the reason that we're not going for supernatural is because we're going to be able to fortify ourselves very easily with the rest of the skills that we have in the build so i figured that paranormal would just be really really strong because if we continue to be healthy which healthy is above 85 percent of your health that you gain a stack of overwhelming blood and when you have five stacks you're going to be able to um, have your next blood surge overpower which is a guarantee and overpower with the insane boost it's going to be incredibly strong now i do want to mention before going on guys this is just my leveling build we have not touched the paragon board on this i will update the paragon board as we get into the end game because this is going to be a build that i'm really really excited about playing so i will update that for you guys in a future video uh, next, we're doing Unliving Energy for just one increased essence, but uh, to go three into Imperfectly Balanced, so that way our core skill is going to cost more, but it's going to deal 15% more um, damage. So 30 essence, we're going to be essence hungry. Uh, now we're going to come down into Blood Mist, into Enhanced Blood Mist, down to Dreadful Blood Mist. Okay, Blood Mist is going to fortify us for 0.5% max life each time it hits an enemy. Blood Mist is going to be incredibly strong here. It's going to give us some very good mobility, and it's going to really help us just maximize our Fortify, which is going to make our Overpowers even stronger. Another big reason why we have Blood Mist is because this is really our only defense to being unstoppable. It is the, it's the only thing that... It doesn't even make us unstoppable. It just breaks any of that stuff. So this is our only real ability to kind of combat crowd control in the game. Next, we're going to come down and we're going to be doing Death's Embrace. Close enemies take more damage and then they take less damage or they deal less damage to us. Then we're doing Amplify Damage for 12% more increased damage uh, to Curse Enemies, which is going to be our Decrepify here. Decrepify is going to go down to Horde. Um, we don't have a big amount of lucky hit in the build, but we might get some stun here. But really, Horde is just going to be that when minions are below 10% life, they're just going to insta-die. Done. Boom. Does not work on bosses, but that's a really, really good skill. Now, I will say, if you feel like during your leveling process, you're pretty essence hungry and you're really struggling to keep your essence up, another thing that you could do is possibly drop to Crepify. You could also go grab Bone Prison and go to Dreadful Bone Prison. So not only does Bone Prison going to give us um, essence 
for each enemy that's trapped but also give us um additional essence for you know each enemy trapped which is 25 and then however many if we trap five then we get another 25 which is great but dreadful is going to give us even more fortify so this is definitely a strong route to take um you could swap out decrepify for it i'm kind of back and forth on this guys sorry if you hear the lawnmower in the background people are mowing out there uh but yeah you could do either one right now i'm leaning towards decrepify because i don't think we're going to have a lot of issues with um you know our essence as far as overpowering so i think bone prison definitely has a slot here but decrepify is also really good you can kind of just do both here um if you wanted just kind of just go back on these but then you lose the 12 percent here so if you go do this then we got three extra points and the 12 percent damage is just lost so there's not really a whole lot extra we could take from this um we'd have to put the points in somewhere else whether it's huge flesh or if it's um maxing out another skill or like putting more points into corpse tendrils something like that but right now i think um the extra damage from amplify and then decrepify is really really strong here then of course we're doing yeah we already got death and brace amplify damage then we're coming down and we're going to be taking every single blood skill that the necromancer has this is incredibly strong all of these are very very important to the build with all of the changes to the blood necro so we got gruesome mending we receive 30 percent more healing from all sources so not only are we going to heal faster the, but we're going to be able to fortify and you know build up that shield so that way our overpower damage deals an insane amount of damage we're doing transfusion again we don't have the biggest amount of lucky hit but when we do get our lucky hits uh we have a chance to spawn the blood orbs which is awesome more blood orbs is very important for the build then um coalescent blood at, while we're healthy again over 85 percent we deal 18 percent increased damage this should always be active okay unless there's really a situation where you're just losing health and not being able to get it back through a potion or through our skills from um, gaining just our life back or blood orbs this should always be active then we got drain vitality again on the lucky hit we have a chance to fortify us for eight percent of our max life which again with all of the changes from base life to max life these four to five percentages of eight percent of max life are going to be huge gains okay then next we got ties of blood which is probably the the most important one out of all these passives your blood skills deal 15 times multiplicative increased overpower damage this bonus is doubled while we're healthy again over 85 percent where we should always have a 30 percent multiplier here this is going to be very very strong for the build next corpse tendrils this is basically a key skill in almost all the necromancer builds i love this skill this is what's going to be able to pull all of our monsters in and just keep them tangled up and makes it easy pickings for us but we're doing blighted the reason that we're doing blighted over plagued is because we want the chance for the blood orbs okay we have a chance every single time we we uh, pull a monster in has a chance to drop a blood orb this can really maximize our potential in the build again vulnerability is still good with the nerf skies even that 20 times multiplier is still strong but i think that blighted is going to be much better now i will say this that if we are making plenty of blood orbs with everything else in the build and not necessarily needed from blighted corpse then i will swap this and i will go to plagued because if we're already making plenty of blood orbs then the extra 20 percent multiplier from them being automatically vulnerable will just be even better but right now we're doing blighted for the increased uh, blood orbs then we're coming down and this is different from i think most people's uh, blood search builds i really love blood wave okay i played it in season one and it was fantastic all right you're going to conjure a title of blood wave that deals damage and knocks enemies back but blood wave also slows them but more importantly blood wave leaves behind three blood orbs now when we get into our affixes or excuse me our aspects guys i don't have it on here because it's not one easy to find but if you do find it you're going to get the legendary aspect that allows blood wave to have three waves which in that case that means we're going to be getting nine blood orbs and we're just going to be doing insane amounts of overpower damage with the nine blood orbs this is fantastic okay next we got inspiring leader because we are doing no minions in this build after we've been healthy for two seconds because of the change it used to be four seconds now it's two we're going to get increased attack speed very very important then we got standalone for increased damage reduction when we have no minions and then we're also doing memento mori for sacrificing both warriors and mages their bonuses are increased by 60 percent big buff there then our key passive for the build guys of course is rathman's vigor this has had a huge change from season one 
after being healthy for 12 seconds, your next blood skill overpowers. This is going to be happening nonstop. And this is going to go on top of all of our other skills that are going to guarantee us our overpower. All right. The timer is reduced. This is the change. The timer is reduced for two seconds each time blood orbs heal or overheal you for amount greater than or equal to your base life. So this is another reason why I'm throwing blood wave in here. Corpse tendrils makes blood orbs. We have all of our other skills that are making blood orbs, including hemorrhage. The reason why is because that what it's going to do is allow us to constantly reset our powers here. The timer is reduced. So our next blood skill that overpowers. So this is going to allow us to constantly overpower just nonstop overpower. If we can keep creating blood orbs, we're going to be able to overpower and deal massive amounts of damage. But more importantly, that's going to make us super tanky. We're going to be super tanky and it's going to be very hard for us to die. So those are the skills, guys. Let's go ahead and go break down all of my skills and gear and the book of the dead. So the book of the dead did get some changes here. We are going to be sacrificing all three. We are going to do skeletal warriors defense here or defenders. We gain 15% non-physical resistance. Um, this is very important just to keep us tanky and just make us stay alive. You could do the increased critical hit chance or critical strike chance. I think that's fine if you guys wanted to do that, but I'm kind of betting in that overpower is just going to be doing so much damage that I'm not going to necessarily need the crit. So I'd rather just be a little bit more tanky considering the resistance system is coming in and we don't really know how balanced and how well that system is going to work. So I think right now I'm going to be taking the non-physical resistance uh, just to be a little bit uh, tankier. As far as mages, this is a no brainer. You're doing mage bones and overpower damage is increased by 40%. This is huge. And then for our golem, we're doing blood maximum life is increased by 10% multiplier. Now, another option is here. You could do, um, the the bone golem for increased attack speed that one is still okay but i like the increased max life that way every time we do our passives and we get the triggers from our passives and skills that increase um our or we fortify um our life for like eight percent of our max life having more max life means we fortify more which makes us more tank here which allows our overpower to be even stronger so i really really like that um now we don't have all the assets here this is just for leveling so i just put in the main ones that you guys are going to need we always take rapid here because rapid is very, very strong. We're going to be able to get what 25% if you get it on the low end from the from the dungeon, which is awesome. Or yeah, you get about like 22 and a half percent base skills, which makes our blood hemorrhage just or hemorrhage, I should say, not blood hemorrhage. Hemorrhage just attack even faster, which is going to give us a chance for more blood orbs and as well as just keep our essence really full. Then we're taking blood bathe aspects. Uh, the blood surge echoes again after a short delay. It is going to deal less damage, but we're going to get multiple triggers of our blood surge. This is a very key skill of the build. Then we have aspect of potent blood. You can see how they all say codex next to it. The codex means that you're going to be able to find these powers in a dungeon. So you don't have to wait to for a legendary to drop. So while healthy again, that's over 85% of your life. Blood orbs grant essence. This is another reason why the more blood orbs we make, the more our essence is going to be filled and the easier that we can just spam our blood surge to just rinse and repeat it's very important this is a very key aspect or or codex for the build last but not least is i know this one isn't a codex but if you do find it it's very very good for the build aspect of wrath was chosen whenever your blood skills overpower which should be all the time or every other time you gain increased attack speed for four seconds huge this is going to be great all right so these three are the main ones that you're going to get while you're leveling now into our gems guys there's a few options that you're going to have here the weapons by far is going to be rubies more overpower damage we're always going to do more overpower damage this is huge now in the armor slot you can do one of two things here you could take sapphire for three percent increased damage reduction while fortified because we should be fortified all the time um, this gonna, just is going to help us stay a little tanky. I'm going to try this one first, but you also have the option for Ruby, which is going to give you just 4% max life. Okay, both of these are very strong. You pick and choose whichever one you need for the build. I'm going to start with Sapphires just because I want to see the damage reduction to see how tanky I can make the build. In Jewelry, you have a few options here again, guys. Depending on how the resistance system is really going to pan out, you can take any one of the first five for any resistance cold lightning fire poison and shadow totally up to you but as a default i'm doing diamonds because it gives five resists to all 
all elements is five more percent okay that if we do that that's 15 percent more resistance across the board as opposed to just centering 30 percent on one however that may change in the future depending on gear but right now we're doing diamonds for the all resist if we feel like we need armor you could take skulls but i think diamonds are going to be better for um the the necromancer now let's get into the vampiric powers here okay we don't really know how all of these are really going to just pan out so i went with the ones that i think are best for the build the first one that i chose is a minor it's prey on the weak we're going to deal 16 percent increased damage to vulnerable enemies enemies are vulnerable while effect affected by a vampiric curse from your other vampiric powers this one is solid however this one can be swapped out revenous on a lucky hit we have a chance to increase our attack speed for uh 40 of our total move speed this is just going to help us just get around the map faster have bigger clear speed um i really do like this one uh sanju embrace when we kill an enemy we fortify six percent of our base life when we fortify more than half of our max life we get crit chance super strong that's a guarantee undying casting skills heals us for three percent life double this bonus when we're below 50 percent this undying is just going to help us stay alive be more tankier etc then we got blood boil when our core skills overpower this is a no-brainer we spawn volatile blood orbs or blood drops collecting them causes a, uh, an explosion dealing six percent physical damage around us every 20 seconds your next skill is guaranteed to overpower this is going to be another way for us to just constantly have the overpower non-stop so it's insane these first two are pretty optional though guys you can kind of mix it up if you weren't if i wasn't going to do um prey on the week i would do anticipation our ultimate skills gain even more cooldown this is probably actually going to be better for our blood wave our ultimate skills do increase damage the increased damage isn't necessarily what we want with our ultimate we want to be able to cast it for the blood orbs okay so nine blood orbs is just going to be nuts okay and then ravenous i really like the movement here so i'd probably stick with exactly this okay the written guide will be filled in here by the time you guys watch this video if it's not i will update it as soon as i can so that is the build guys it is blood surge overpowering for the necromancer i think the build is going to be absolutely insane I think it's going to be super strong and i don't think that necromancer is going to have any issues in season two it's probably going to be one of the strongest classes in the game if not the strongest class in the game so that's the video guys like it comment down below let me know what you guys think of my blood search build and what are you guys playing for the season let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and as always stay gaming i'll catch you guys in the next one peace